So I got myself another new tool. And to go with it. So this is a Unipunch 4A 1.5 and a 4A 2.5. So what this is, this is a standard hole punch. Just a regular round hole. But this, I have to look it up to be sure. But I think it's called an edge finisher, edge trim. I don't know. Anyway. What it does. piece of bar and it trims the edge to a shape so if you're making multiple parts you feed this through and it, it uh, finishes both ends at the same finishes one end of each bar at the same time and the hole punch puts a hole in each end so when it's done, oh, it's very crude. Gives me that. Now they sell this. This one here, it'll do both operations in one step. It'll punch both holes and clear out this stock. So when you get it, I don't have one here, but when you pull the piece out this end is completely done it's got the hole it's got the edge it's ready to go I opted to go with two individuals because I wanted to use the hole punch for something else so even though I have the additional setup between the two tools now I have two tools and I can use uh, use them individually for the, the small expense of an extra setup, I have uh, more options as to how to use these things. Um, this will make more sense when you see the project I'm working on, but I, I think it's not rocket science. So for each of these, I need to make some guides so that the stock is in the correct place when it's being punched. So this here is the, uh, the guide for the smaller of the two. It'll make more sense as, a, as we get into it here. Since this one is just the hole punch, it's not going to be as wide as the, uh, the other one. Because I'm going to have the base here and then mounted to it where you see there's four holes. It's going to be a pedestal of sorts where the guide can sit on top and position the material where I want it. So here it is after uh, just knocked it down with the orbital sander. The process for the other one will be the same, it's just a little bit bigger. So this is the pedestal. It's just going to have some corresponding holes to match the ones in the plate. Two pin holes and two bolt holes. The pin holes are for alignment. The hole punch is going to have uh, one pedestal and the, uh, the bigger punch is going to have two, one on each side. So I need to make three of these. And the one for the hole punch is going to have the same hole pattern top and bottom. But the one for the, the part finisher needs to have some guides in it, almost like a track. So that's what this is here. This part already has the holes on the bottom for mounting and alignment. Here I'm just cutting a slot 
for the material to uh, slide through. And there'll be one of these on each side. This one here is the uh, outfeed side, so you can see those two angles there. Should just help with alignment as it's coming through, hopefully. And this here is the actual guide that goes on top of the pedestal for the hole punch. Should be able to slide the end of the material in here and get it positioned exactly where I want it to punch the hole at. At least that's the theory. So it wasn't until about 10 minutes after I finished this that I realized there was a arbor press right to the left of where I was sitting. What I should have used to put those pins in instead of a hammer, but wasn't paying attention. So here you can see how it sits. Feed the material in here, and it it'll hopefully put the uh, put the material right where I want it. And this is the bigger plate. I didn't show making this it was the same as the smaller one. It's just bigger, more holes. It's a little snug there. I might have to file that down a little bit. They're too snugged and too loose, I guess. But it wasn't until I got it all the way together that I realized that I, I hadn't made a stop for it. I could feed the material in and that would be great, but how do I set the length? So that's what these parts here are for, is making a stop. Try and uh, make the process a little more automatic. So here it is all together. You can see the uh, the stop mounted there, and it's uh it's drilled and tapped so you can be set to any length on that rod. So this is cool and all, but uh, let's go try them out. Yeah, that is a little snug. I'm, I'm going to have to loosen that up somehow. So these pieces I'm making here, they're just test pieces. I wanted to make sure everything worked and see how fast I could crank out a few parts. So obviously I need to put some holes in these plates to keep them from sliding around while they're in the machine. But overall for the first test I'm <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. These things are cool. So that's uh that's four parts there that were just made. Uh, ends finished, holes punched on each end. 
four parts in just about two minutes. So 30 seconds apart. I can deal with that. Uh, the real parts, the initial reason I got this are a little bit bigger. But like I said, this is just a test. If you want to see that, then uh, check out the next video. But that's it. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.